Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. It's reviewing man, reviewing what he can. Movies are his jam, so let's get twisted, man. It's review. Welcome into a new episode of the Review Arrive Show, man. Appreciate you hitting that play and checking in on the show. On this week's episode, I'm going to be giving my thoughts for the first Omen. As well, we'll be talking some news, man. We've got some DC news and some horror news to go over for you on this week's episode. So hope everybody out there has been doing great since the last episode, man. Been releasing plenty of episodes lately. Uh, most recently released the Civil War review, so check that out. That was most re- the most recent release. I did some um, CinemaCon talk on there as well. Did a sh- another episode for the film Monkey Man that has um, that review and talk over there, so... Keeping it going, man. It's how, kind of how this show has progressed with a lot more movies coming out now. There's so much, many opportunities to do, and I don't want to pile all reviews into one episode. I want to give them all their own time, if that makes sense. So, doing a bunch of episodes, and just did uh, Thrill Me Weekly. We did that, had a fun time over there with that, talking all kinds of stuff from WrestleMania 40 to more CinemaCon stuff to Universal's hotels and uh, reality shows. So, good time was had over there, man. Check that all out. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into this film. The First Omen is rated R for violent content, grisly, uh, disturbing images, and brief graphic nudity. Brief graphic... Oh, yes, there is. Oh, that was... That was insane. Um, horror, mystery, thriller. That is the trifecta of awesome right there. The film is two hours, and it is in theaters at the moment. Uh, when a young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, she encounters a darkness that causes her to question her own faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. Rotten Tomatoes critics have it at an 81%, while the audience is at a 70%, and IMDb has it at a 6.9 out of 10. So, what were my thoughts on this film? And be honest with you, not even going to bury the lead. I flipping love this movie right from the get-go. Right from the get-go. Like, I'm not even kidding. You know, watching it and all that stuff, I was entranced, I was intrigued, I was shocked. <laughs> you know, I was like, holy insanity that this going on with this movie right now and kid you not like halfway through the movie my guess like, immediately number one film of the year so far um obviously there's other movies coming out including the joker but uh no, it immediately moved up to the top of my list uh for my favorite film that i've seen so far in 2024 because it's just hitting on every single aspect as soon as this film got going man and i i haven't seen the omen film from 76 i haven't seen that movie um, but i've seen clips of it and i've seen um the shows where they're talking about most um scary moments and horror and stuff like that so i've seen the omen and i uh, i've seen clips of the omen and i know of the omen and i know of all that stuff and i know the uh, i got the gist of the story there so going into this movie knowing that it was the first omen so it takes place before that movie i was like okay i i, I get the idea of what i'm going into I don't believe I ever saw a trailer for this movie either. Um, I just it's, again, if it's a horror movie, I'm gonna watch it, right? So I was going in there just to have fun, watch a horror film. I was not expecting to see probably one of the better horror films I've seen in quite some time, and on top of that, one of probably my all-time favorite horror films, and just the one viewing I've seen it so far. Like I think what they did with this movie was fantastic. Like, so good. Like, it, the violence is insane in this movie. Like, I've mentioned the graphic, um, disturbing images and the grisly images in this movie. They have that. They have this unnerving, uneasy feeling with the film as well. That when you have, like, these movies that are dealing with um, kind of demonic stuff. And with horror and religion. I talked about this with uh, Immaculate recently. Which this movie is kind of getting compared to because of the whole 
pregnancy, evil, demonic aspect. It happens in horror films. I'm pretty sure The Omen was the 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 uh, catalyst for a lot of a lot of that. There's probably movies even before The Omen that you know has that stuff. Like horror and religion have always been connected, and they'll always be connected in that way. But when you're watching a horror film, like I can't remember the last time I maybe talked to me last year, where I was just at a point of I was watching the movie and I was disturbed by things I was seeing. I was not expecting him to go there, you know, um, and I was not expecting to feel just an unease while watching it. And I'm, like I said, I've watched tons of horror films. I've seen them, all kinds of things for the most part. So I'm, I shouldn't be like shocked by much or taken aback or all that stuff. Like I'm kind of used to it. I get, you know, people are, when I go to Halloween Horror Nights, they don't see me reacting all that much to the houses because I love it. I'm having a fantastic time, but stuff doesn't scare me, I guess, because I'm, I guess, desensitized to the stuff, but I love it so much. And I always have a good time watching these things. And the first omen just does that. Like I was sitting in the chair in the theater, just absolutely 100% entranced by this film, like, wanting to see where it's going and wanting to see how it's all going to lead up from the get-go. Like, right from the get-go, I was in love with this movie. Like, way to go. And again, I haven't seen the other Omen, the Omen movie from 1976, so I have nothing to gauge it on. There's no bias with that movie or that franchise or anything like that. It's just straight up, absolutely loved the film. Like, I, I love the story that they put together here. I, I love um, the way they made it feel uneasy they made it push the limits and go past those limits in the film and they just delivered on strong performance and the film does have strong performances from its whole cast man like I, it's just it is so <laughs> like, i keep saying it but it is to me it is so freaking good like i want to see this movie again and I, hopefully i can make time to go see it again in theaters because it deserves that man be it you know nail tiger free who is the star of the film Flippin' fantastic. So good. But, I mean, everybody. Sonia Barga. You know? Incredible. Like, there's not a bad moment in this film to me. Like, at all. Like, everything in the movie just works to that degree. You know, maybe there's... You know, it's... We're dealing with um, nun life, right? So we're dealing with that. Like, again, Immaculate just came out recently, and there's the comparisons that get thrown around there just because it's a horror film and has nuns in it. Um, I wouldn't overly compare the two movies. I think they're different. But, and I like this one more than Immaculate, and that's no thing against Immaculate. Immaculate's a really good movie as well. Um, but I, I like what they did. Uh, as far as comedy aspects, like, they throw... Maybe something you'd snicker at every now and then because it's meant to be that way. It's not one of those horror films where you laugh at it because it's just insanely goofy. Um, it's very well done. It's very well put together. It's thought out, in my opinion. And I love what they did. Um, twists and stuff like that, I kind of caught on pretty quickly. But it doesn't ruin the movie for me by any means. Like I, I, I still enjoyed it. I, I love what they did. And I like how they... Like, so going into story-wise, where we're with this young American woman who's going to Rome to begin, you know, her life of the church, right? And I like how they show all that, but they also show before the, was it the swearing-in, or the the pledge, whatever it is, that they do to um, give themselves fully to the church, that, you know, her going through a little bit of regular life moments, and learning that, and then the the uh, ramifications, if you will, afterwards. So, non-spoiler talk, obviously. I never want to spoil anything. I love the movie. Like, I absolutely love the movie. It's immediately at my number one spot. I don't... We'll see what Joker brings. Um, Abigail comes out this week. I'm highly excited about that movie. Maybe that can take it, but I'm blown away by the first one. I was absolutely blown away while watching the film, and then, of course, since seeing that movie. And I've seen uh, Civil War since then, and... Um, still thinking about the omen that's nothing in civil war either you can go check out my review on that one but the first omen is just sticking with me <laughs> you know and it's sticking with me in a way that i just can't shake um i think it's really good i think it's a really really good film and i do say go see it in theaters two hours worth your time um absolutely worth your time so give that a check out that is my spoiler free thoughts on the first omen if you saw the film let me know what you thought about it down in the comments uh let's start a conversation there so that is it for the movie review 
going into news, and like I mentioned, I've been doing multiple episodes recently with multiple films coming out, so I've been covering the news a lot. So have some news articles that have come out since the last episode, which was a day ago. But um, we'll uh, we'll get through it pretty quickly here. Let's see. So first off, in the DC side of things, uh, we've got our first tease, uh, if you will, of Peacemaker season two, dropping with uh, Disney or Disney DC Studios co-chairman and co-CEO James Gunn providing it to us on his uh, Instagram. Uh, he revealed a selfie that he took with uh, him reflecting off the back of Peacemaker's headgear, his helmet. Um, and then he uh, quoted it with, quote, day one, season two, end quote, and then the mermaid emoji. Which some people are like, oh, that means Aquaman. It doesn't mean Aquaman, actually. And of course, Aquaman was in the first season, but remember, this is a whole new start or something else. That confuses a lot of people, but yeah, whatever. Um, but the, the mermaid is um, a callback to the show. Uh, for season one of the show, the mermaid emoji is like a nod, I guess, or um, something fun for the fans to have uh, from the first season from Vigilante. The Vigilante character bringing up the emoji saying that that is his favorite emoji because it's, quote, happy, sad, and everything in between, end quote. So uh, that's the meaning he has for the emoji. So that's why that's there. It's not an Aquaman thing. Um, but yes, I'm very excited. I loved the first season of Peacemaker. I thought, you know, uh, the they had the balls to do it, and they went through with it. And James Gunn was the person to deliver with that. So, and John Cena just expertly, freaking nailed that character and made that character so much fun and worth it. One of the greatest television show openings of all time. A song that is fantastic and led me to finding out more things from that band, which that's the thing you get with James Gunn, man. James Gunn movies will put some music in there. Yeah, I know a lot of people talk about Guardians of the Galaxy, but freaking Peacemaker, every single song I heard in that, I'm like, oh, gotta look this up. Gotta look that up. Gotta look that up, man. And I might make a playlist, honestly, of just songs heard in James Gunn stuff. Because it's always like a banger. It's always good, man. It's always a good time. And I love uh, Wigwam. That was the name of the band that did the song. Uh, the theme song for Peacemaker. Oh, so good. So good. Not even did the theme song. Like That was a Wigwam song already. And then they used it for that show. And it's just... Oh, so good. Plus there's John Cena playing piano to Home Sweet Home from Motley Crue, my favorite band. Come on. Show's meant for me, man. So I'm excited for uh, season two for sure. Over in the horror realm, uh, I did mention CinemaCon earlier and did talk a good bit about the stuff that was announced there, but something that completely went under my radar was I'm kind of shocked by uh, that fact because I wouldn't have expected this to go <laughs> under my radar by any means, but it did, is uh, Blumhouse. You know Blumhouse. Blumhouse is always into the news something because they're always doing something. Um, and we talked about it that they're bringing... Um, Blair Witch back, but they showed a first look of the Wolfman. Remember the uh, the classic Universal Monster property that Blumhouse is doing with Lee Wanell back, which we're excited about that because we all saw Invisible Man. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go see it. Um, pause this episode. No, listen to the show. I need to listen. Um, but um, go watch Invisible Man for sure. Uh, Wolfman, which is going to be starring uh, Christopher Abbott as the, uh, the I guess the Predator. Um, so, he's a man whose family is stalked by a dangerous predator. The film uh, has recently begun production, but an early look was revealed, uh, including Abbott's character, and it appears to be that Abbott's character is the threat. Um, so, what was shown is that it features a creepy, atmospheric shot of the family in the house, uh, darkness around. His daughter asks if they are going to die. He says no. The daughter's like, that's a lie. Everyone dies eventually. Like, what the hell, daughter? <laughs> like, we know this, but come on, we're not dying right now. Hopefully not. Um, and then, uh, for the family, Abbott's character returns home. We see a bite on his arm, which, of course, suggests the uh, fact that it will be transforming into a wolfman, right? That's the whole wolfman thing. So, I don't know how this slipped under my radar, but I... I love the Universal Monsters. I'm so excited about everything uh, that we're getting there from this to the uh, Dark Universe that is heading into Epic Universe over there in Universal Land. So I'm excited, man. Um, and I know it's called Universal Studios. I call it Universal Land because I'm me. Um, but I, I'm excited about all that stuff. And you're giving me more Universal Monsters stuff. Cool. Like, I enjoy it. I get a lot of flack, but I love The Mummy 2017. So... I, I I enjoy these things. I enjoy these movies a lot. I like the, the mythology and the stuff involved in all of them, and seeing them come back is really great. Uh, we also saw, not from CinemaCon, but before, we got our first look at Christian Bale um, 
as the Frankenstein monster in Maggie Gyllenhaal's Frankenstein. Yes, double check that. Um, yes, it is Maggie Gyllenhaal. So, first look of Christian Bale, um, teaser look of Christian Bale as the monster is out there. Uh, the film is titled The Bride. Let's see. Um, Bale stars opposite Buckley, uh, Jesse Buckley, who is playing the bride, and then uh, Penelope Cruz, Peter Skarsgård, and Annette Bening are also part of the cast. So there you go. And it's got the cinematographer from Joker, and Joker's fantastic. So yeah, excited for that, man. Like, I'm excited for any Universal Monster stuff. It doesn't, um... Melissa Barrera have one as well. I can spell her name right. <laughs> Melissa Barrera Frankenstein, right? She has a Frankenstein movie. I could have sworn she has a Frankenstein movie. Uh, Melissa Barrera, a new horror comedy movie. Uh, Your Monster. So yeah, uh, we got the first look at that. It's called Your Monster. And... Uh, it's said to be a blending of romance, horror, comedy, musical elements. So, kind of like Lisa Frankenstein, I would guess. Um, that would be the easy comparison, the most recent easy comparison. So, I mean, again, even with Lisa Frankenstein, there's so much stuff going on around, uh, whether it's the straight-up Universal Monsters or something uh, inspired by the Universal Monsters that's going on right now. That's cool to see. It's, it's cool to see those things still out there and building because that was such a huge building, the f foundation of film, especially Universal Pictures. So, um, excited for it. Excited for all of them. Can't wait to check them all out. But uh, mostly that Wolfman. Really excited about that. And then news that we all knew was going to happen. Five Nights at Freddy's sequel is happening. I mean, that's not... You know, that's not too shocking of uh, news for anybody to hear. Uh, we knew that was going to happen, and it's, you know, been confirmed. So, uh, good on them there, man. But that's going to do it, actually, for this episode. Like I said, uh, with <laughs> releasing multiple episodes a week, uh, some weeks, depending on how many movies I get to see, it's going to happen. And uh, this week we have Abigail coming out, which I am extremely excited for. Uh, was on my highly anticipated list, and I'm very, I mean, that and Joker are my most anticipated films of the year, and then we have a, um, oh my god, Henry Cavill film coming out this week, that looks like it'll be a good fun time as well, um, the, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, that is, uh, releasing this week, um, I like Henry Cavill, I, obviously, my first introduction was him was with, um, Superman? Um, I feel like I saw a movie with him in it before, but I, I really learned about him more as Superman, obviously, as a DC fan and watching those movies. And then I, I have enjoyed all his works from Mission Impossible up to uh, Argyle recently, which was this year as well. So I that movie looks fun. Like That looks like a good, fun, um, action-y film. Good time to have in a theaters kind of movie. So checking that out. But um, Abigail, for sure, highly excited. We'll be reviewing that next week. Um, yeah, so that'll do it for this week's episode. Appreciate you joining in and listening to the show. Uh, again, Throw Me Podcast Network, we got all kinds of fun stuff going on over here. Uh, like I said, we just recently released uh, Throw Me Weekly, fun little show where we're talking all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I had two episodes come out last week. Check those out. And that's that, man. So appreciate you. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the day, week, month, year. And as always, remember that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.